Hello, this is Meme Analysis, and today we're going to be talking about parrots and memes. Now, to start, if you have any familiarity with jokes and comedy, you've likely heard innumerable parrot jokes. But you might have never asked yourself, why is it that parrots are the subject of all of these jokes? Today I'm going to explain the symbolic resonance of parrots and how they best embody memes in general. So, to start, I'll tell a joke. So, there's a woman, she walks to work every day. Every day, she walks by a pet shop. And at this pet shop, there's a parrot. And every day when she walks by the pet shop, the parrot says, hey lady, you're ugly. Every day this happens. Finally, she gets tired of it, she goes into the pet shop, she tells the owner, hey, your parrot every day tells me I'm ugly. Could you do something about this? He says, of course, of course. He tells the parrot, listen, you say that again, I'm going to chop you up and feed you to the dogs. The parrot says, all right, all right, all right. So the next day, the lady walks by. The parrot says, hey, lady. She says, yeah. He says, you know. And indeed, the parrot knows what the subject knows. Why is this? mimicry. Parrots are an animal that mimics. This is what makes them remarkable. And they are thus ruled by the god of mimicry, of magic and imitation, which is Mercury. And they are specifically the zodiacal sign Gemini. This is a traditional correspondence. You can see it in any uh, book of correspondences, like 777. So, Gemini and Mercury, the signs, the magical signs of imitation and mimicry. They also rule monkeys. And where else do we see a combination of birds and monkeys? In the god Thoth. Thoth who creates writing and creates symbols. We find, and I think honestly, you know, monkeys also mimic. Monkey see, monkey do. Parrot hears, parrot speaks, and monkey sees, and monkey does. Both are the mimicking animals. This is what makes both of them the subject of many jokes. You'll find a lot of monkey jokes as well. But I think that in particular, parrots and birds and general Thoth, of course, is an ibis-headed god. They are associated with writing because if you look at something like cuneiform, and then you walk on the beach, if you're lucky enough to live on a beach, look at the sand, you'll see the prints of birds look remarkably like cuneiform. I think it's not much of a stretch to imagine that early humans who saw the prints of birds imagined that they too could make marks and make them meaningful. Because of course, uh, bird marks surrounding one area is a, a relatively meaningful phenomenon. Clearly there's food there. There's something they're bringing the birds. They are writing food, 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 food. You know? So, that of course gives us a little, a little aside to the nature of symbols in general, the nature of creating things. And of course, the deck of cards we just produced, the gift of Thoth. You see, you know, Thoth is no longer writing with his feet, no longer writing with claws, but writing with a pen, with a stylus. And thus, he is the god of memes. Thoth, Mercury, Odin, these are the gods of memes because they are the gods of mimicry, the gods of language and the gods of symbols. So this brings us also to a modern form of divine bird imagery associated with language. In Twitter, this is probably the worst Twitter drawing imaginable, but this is simply meant to remind, remind me. So Twitter, if you've been on memeanalysis.com, I don't even know if it's up anymore, this part, but if you were on it once upon a time, I had a table of correspondences for websites, and Twitter is Gemini. I, I think of it specifically as the tarot card cruelty, which is Mars in Gemini, the expression of aggressive energy through language, through words. This is Twitter. You know, um, to also give a bit about Gemini, Gemini is very dual. It's very schizophrenic, it's opposed to itself. 
And this is the nature of language as well. You know, we're never satisfied with what we say. We're never satisfied with our expressions of ourselves because they always remain other to the intention. There's always a duality. This is the opposite of Sagittarius, which is faith, which is a singularity of energetic expression, which is generally more active or spiritual. It, it removes itself from the realm of language, which parrots symbolize and memes exist within, largely. You get as well, again, let's talk a little bit about monkeys more. Of monkey see, monkey do. Thoth not only is an ibis-headed god, but a baboon-headed god. In baboons, we find the religious impulse, the beginning of the religious impulse. Sagittarius and Gemini are opposite. So the beginnings of traits are in each other. And monkeys, I think, display the religious side of Gemini. Um, baboons in Egypt, and I suppose everywhere, at sunrise appear to pray. They bow to the sun. They make prayers to the sun. This is you know, brilliant and amazing, fantastic. Astounding. They also have hands like us. Thus, again, once we have created tools, it's easy to see that we'll see it in things similar to us. And of course, I think they've reported now that um, there are monkeys that are entering the Stone Age right now. Pretty astounding. Thoth would be proud. Mimicry. Meme is derived from mimic. Mem, mim, mimicry. Me, 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 me. A little bit of schizophrenic etymology for you. But mimicry and mimetics are both a study in duality, in making oneself a reflection, in creating reflections. Thoth is the moon. You know, back in the old days, there were more masculine moon gods. Today, it's mostly feminine. But he was a masculine moon god, and he had the lunar disk atop his head. And the moon is a reflective surface. The sun, you know, it radiates in its own right. It is self-illuminating. The moon is illuminated by the sun. It exists in response to the sun, just as Thoth exists in response to Horus or to Ra. He is a complement to the sun, a complement to the solar energy. And this is the way that memes are, that all mimicry is. It, it exists in response to an original prototype, which is in itself a radical energetic expression. And what follows is the copying the mimicking of the original. And the effectiveness of the copy is, in fact, dependent upon the energy present in the original thing. The moon is the greatest meme because the moon is the reflection of the sun, which is the greatest energetic force in our lives. It's real. So imagine this when, when we say that memes matter. The matter is the sun that is giving light to the meme. You can see the dual dynamic present. Oh, one more thing, one more thing. What is the outcome of endless mimicry, of mimicry brought to its most effective place, of the most profoundly effective memes, as I've called them, big memes, but what if there is as in fairy tales, a big bad meme. A big bad meme is the basilisk. If you've read David Langford's story, Blit, you know that the origin of the concept of a basilisk or of a mimetic hazard is in fact in the story called the parrot. It's an image of a parrot that kills on sight, just like uh, the cockatrice or the basilisk are both associated with birds. I think it's no surprise uh, in an unreleased video, maybe we'll release it at the, maybe we'll put it at the very end of this. I talked about how dangerous reading is, how dangerous gaining information 
without the proper internal structures is. That simply taking in images, taking in words can be horrific for the psyche of an individual who is not prepared, and especially for the masses. This is the nature of propaganda. This is the nature of mottos. They transmit energy and are mimicked endlessly. And to what end? The people who are engaging in the mimicry don't know. So I say, enlighten oneself. Take on some sun. The moon is good, but take on some sun. Give some light of your own. Don't just reflect what you see and read. And as always, remember, memes matter. And, and, pick up a deck of symbol, the gift of Thoth, to learn the nature of Thoth and his symbols.